Hey, welcome to episode four of uh, the Science of Setup. Um, today we're going to talk about the overall chassis stiffness, uh, overall suspension stiffness, uh, which essentially affects the how responsive the car is. So previously we uh, talked about the weight transfer and weight transfer balance, and essentially we're going to use the same toolkit. But now we're going to just focus on uh, adjusting the overall stiffness of the car, which is going to affect the uh, how much the chassis rolls in the corners. So our toolkit's going to be ride height, which affects our CG position, uh, roll center positions, uh, shock angles and, and mounting points, and our uh, spring rates and anti-roll bars. So let's get started. Okay, first, uh, first thing is uh, we're going to be primarily looking at this number right here, the chassis roll sensitivity. Uh, that is what uh, provides you the indication of uh, how soft or how stiff the car is. The bigger this number is, the softer the chassis will be in roll. The smaller the number, the stiffer the chassis is in roll. So just as a quick uh, example here, let's have a look at uh, some other cars, so uh, for, or a touring car, uh, right around one degree per G. Uh, the king of uh, roll stiffness is our uh, uh, on-road nitro cars, 0.55 degrees per G. Um, and then we get into our off-road vehicles. <clears throat> so let's look at a, a Truggy. Truggy's around 3.3. Uh, and the car we're going to use for today's example, uh, two-wheel drive buggy, um, right around 3.4. So off-road, you can see off-road vehicles much, much softer in roll. Uh, that's pretty understandable considering the uh, surface and the bumps and jumps and everything that uh, these vehicles have to uh, deal with. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to try and maintain our um, weight transfer balance. So we're going to try and maintain our front roll couple. And <laughs> we'll look at um, uh, things in weight transfer here in a second. Uh, but what we're going to try and do is we're going to say, okay, we're, we're going to a much smoother track, fewer jumps, smaller jumps, uh, so we can stand uh, having a little stiffer uh, car, which is going to make it uh, more responsive to driver inputs. So first thing we can do, easiest thing to do, is we can just lower our ride height. <clears throat> so let's just say we can take five millimeters out of our ride height. So if we lower the front and rear by five millimeters, that lowers our roll centers <clears throat> and actually increased our roll sensitivity. You would expect it to go the other direction. So why did it do that? Well, the reason being, uh, in lowering the uh, CG, we've also affected our roll center position. So our CG distance to our roll center distance is actually greater than what it was before. Uh, we lowered the CG by five millimeters, and if we look at the rear here, um, the CG in the rear actually changed by five and a half millimeters, and changed by even more in the front. So that's the reason that the the roll sensitivity went up. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing because by lowering the CG, we've uh, affected the uh, total lateral load transfer that we're going to see <clears throat> from the inside tires to the outside tires. So let's just leave that as it is, <laughs> and let's look at some of the other things we can do. So we can lower our roll centers, so or sorry, raise our roll centers because we want to try and increase the stiffness. So if we drop our upper length down. We could also play around with our lower lengths, but that's going to, uh, in this case, affect the uh, kick up on the front of the car, which has a whole bunch of other impacts. So we're not even going to play with that. Uh, let's just lower our front and rear, um, which is going to raise our roll centers. So our roll centers are now back up again. Uh, our front to rear roll couple has not changed because we're that number there is basically just looking at our roll stiffness. But now we have lowered our roll sh our chassis roll sensitivity, so we will have less roll in the chassis now. Uh, we've also increased our camber gain, which we'll talk about 
in the next episode. So the other thing we can do is I, we can adjust our uh, uh, shock angles. So if we adjust our front and rear, and you'll notice here that whatever I do to the front, I'm doing to the rear because I'm trying to maintain the same weight transfer balance. So you can see here that our weight transfer balance has changed slightly, or roll couple, I should say. Not, it's not all weight transfer balance. Uh, is is fairly similar. Our roll sensitivity has now dropped again. So what else can we do? Well, we could go to harder springs. So let's go to let's go up two spring rates on the front, and let's go up two spring rates on the rear. So there again, you can see <clears throat> our roll sensitivity has dropped again, and our roll couple is still fairly similar. Uh, the last thing we could do is we could increase the stiffness of our anti-roll bars. So let's go up one bar diameter on the front. And unfortunately, we don't have a 2.7, so let's just go to a 2.8. Okay, so now we may have upset our weight transfer balance. As you can see here that our roll couple is significantly less now than it was. So this would move the car more towards a balanced condition as in terms of the... Uh, um, roll couple, but uh, may not be what we're trying to achieve. So really what we need here is we need a 2.7 millimeter uh, bar, but we don't have one in this this car, so let's just leave things as they were. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go through that same process again and just have a look at what it's doing in our weight transfer. So I don't want to save this. I'm just going to go straight into weight transfer, and we're going to go through that whole thing again. <clears throat> and we're just going to look at the weight transfer effects. So the first thing we did was is we lowered our ride height. So let's do that. Apply that. So you can see here we have a drastic difference in what we did between front and rear as far as the weight transfer is concerned. So we need to do the same thing to the rear to make sure that that effect doesn't change our, our handling characteristics. So there, I lowered the front and the rear the same amount <clears throat> and what we've done there is we've minimized the amount or reduced the amount of uh, weight transfer going from the inside tire to the outside tire. We've actually moved 50 grams or reduced it by almost 50 grams, which is a good thing. Um, according to our uh, first episode where we looked at uh, tire performance, the closer the uh, weight or the, the load on the inside and outside tires is, the more overall grip you should create. Uh, that of course assumes that the tires have more overall grip to provide. So <clears throat> let's look at our other changes. We looked at lowering our or sorry, raising our roll center. So we apply that. So now you can see we've upset our balance again. So let's go back to and we'll do the same thing on the rear. And there we go. We're pretty pretty close again. Never going to get it exactly the same, but you know you're trying to uh, trying to maintain things as maintain things as close as possible. <clears throat> so the other thing we did was we raised up our shock one hole so you can see it there that that increases the uh, effective stiffness uh, at the wheel by about five percent so let's apply that and again we got to go into here and do the same thing on the rear and apply that so you can see we're again we're still pretty close together we got about 50 45 to 50 grams being transferred now the other thing we looked at was <clears throat> just changing the spring rate. So let's stiffen the rear and let's stiffen the front. Okay, so again we've got uh, very similar weight transfers front and rear, so we haven't affected our balance. And the last thing that we looked at was just changing our anti-roll bars. <clears throat> so we went to a 2.6 and a 
So you can see what that does. We have now have much, much more percentage of the weight transfer on the front than we do on the rear. So that's not something that we're trying to do here, so we're going to leave it back where it was. Okay, so let's just save this because we're going to do a couple of quick comparisons here. So we're going to create a new setup. I'm just going to switch us back here, and here's our new setup. And we'll just call this stiffer. save that. So let's just do a quick comparison between our stock setup. So we were sitting at 3.44, 53.17, and our new one is 53.11 and 3.0. So all those changes we made uh, results in about a 15% change in the uh, in the roll sensitivity. So you're going to see significantly less chassis roll, uh, and the uh, car will be quite a bit more responsive. Now, one last thing I want to show you is, let's go to the Dynamics page, and let's just look at the rear. Confuse things with the front. So, uh, let's start with the original. So, just to show you how much this affects things. Let's go back to our, this is our original setup where we started. <laughs> so we're just going to look at the, well, let's look at the roll angle first. Um, so this is, this line represents how much chassis roll you get as a function of the lateral G. So if we look at, right at around 1G, <coughs> you'll see we're at 3.34. So essentially what this line is, the slope of this line, is your chassis roll sensitivity. So by changing your chassis roll sensitivity, you're changing how steep or how shallow the pitch of this line is. So let's have a look at our camber angles. So you can see here, uh, out at the maximum um, G, and we're looking at here is 1.5, we're getting about 2.7 degrees of positive camber, which you wouldn't think would be good. Certainly wouldn't be an on-road, but off-road tires have so much compliance in them that uh, it seems to uh, work okay. So you can see here we got 2.73 to 6.61 degrees. That's our spread in camber angles from the uh, outside tire to the inside tire. So now let's look at what our new setup does. So our new setup. Back to dynamics in the rear. So we were 2.73. Now we're 1.64. So we have one degree less camber change on the rear than we did in the previous version, which is definitely significant. And we were at 6.61, and now we are going to be at 5.5. So we have one degree less change on the inside tire as well. So what we've done is we've actually reduced the difference between the inside and outside camber angles so that we're maintaining more upright positions. And if we just animate our, do our little animation here, you can see what's, uh, what's happening. So you can see there we're going out to 1.5 degrees on the uh, um, outside tire, and we're down at minus 5.5 degrees on the inside tire. Okay, so that's it for this. What we want to take away from this is uh, ride height. So changes in ride height affects not only your CG, but it affects your lateral weight transfer and your roll centers. So this can affect your stiffness in the opposite direction of what you're looking for, but that may not necessarily be a bad thing. Uh, because by lowering your uh, center of gravity, you're reducing the amount of lateral weight transfer, which is always a good thing to do. Um, and if, to maintain the balance, if you have a car that works well, has a good uh, front to rear handling balance, then and you, what you're trying to do is just, just change the overall stiffness, 
whatever you do to the front, do to the rear, and you'll end up with uh, something that handles the same and should be more responsive. Okay, that's it. Up next, we're going to talk about camber and camber gain. Episode 5, coming soon.